Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tom Bunn. I'm an associate on the iSelect Fund Ventures team. Um, I'd like to welcome you all to the Agri-Food Conversations brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. Um, as many of you know, Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in food and ag. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, and this month's theme for June is ag finance. On today's call, we are joined by Holly Bunn, Vice President of Lending and Operations, and Dan Cosgrove, CEO of Grower's Edge. The Grower's Edge intelligence platform uses sophisticated data science, as well as public and private data sets and deep learning algorithms to design warranty-backed crop management plans sold through U.S. ag retailers. These plans reduce a farmer's risk and help them more efficiently and effectively plant, nurture, and harvest crops. Each of you knows companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We've invited you to this call because you are some of the smartest, most talented people in Grower's Edge's market. You are potential customers for their products and services. You've built a similar company to Grower's Edge, or you are a sophisticated business person or ag professional who understands their market and the challenges and opportunities the Grower's Edge may face. Before we get started, we have a quick poll question to give a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a moment to answer. And a few process comments while the poll is running. We are not soliciting investment in any way whatsoever. This presentation is to provide information to help Growers Edge find customers, mentors, or other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. Secondly, you are all on mute. However, you can use the chat window or the Q&A pane to ask a question at any time. Finally, this presentation is being recorded and will be available for replay. So with that, I am pleased to introduce Holly Bunn, the VP of Lending and Operations of Grower's Edge. So awesome. Thanks again, Tom. I appreciate it. Yes, I am here from Grower's Edge Financial, and I'm going to talk a bit about our lending product. As you can see on the screen here, we have three products um, that we talk about, which is both lending software and analytics, as well as our crop plan. Um, the lending and the crop plan both are deeply embedded with both software and analytics. And I'll just say at the highest level, crop plan is a warranty product guaranteeing um, an experience for growers through ag retailers, just to give you a sense of what that is. But I'm here today to dig into the lending. So if you wanna advance that. So the platform that we have built is an end-to-end -end digital lending solution. And these just quickly call out the highlights and then give you more details we dig into this presentation. Um, but this is really focused on an easy process for the grower and the ag retailer or the partner. It gives an improved business image for that partner. And in the way that that happens is this is a white labeled product. So they could have their logo on that um, and change the image that they might have in their local communities, which is some of them don't have an opportunity to invest in this type of software and present that on their own. From the financial position perspective, um, this allows them to remove some accounts receivable that they might be carrying and have them carried by someone else, which would be Growers Edge Lending. So those two are two very compelling business reasons why some of the partners are interested in this product. Of course, we have to have fast approval because that's what you know, our customers demand in today's rate, obviously competitive rates, and then reliable decisions and have confidence in you know, what kind of scorecard are you using? Where did this come from? We provide real-time loan accounting management analysis. We have a very strong developed core banking system, um, which I'll give you a couple of views of that as we get through here. And then this allows the ag retailer or the partner that we work with to strengthen their relationship with their grower, which of course is very important to them, which is also a key component of our business strategy going to market. You could advance, please. All right. So within the lending products, there's three different ones. You'll see we lead off there with sustainability, retail, and then a SaaS software as a system. The sustainability product is one that we work with our partners um, that have a very specific and intentional product that they're looking to sell that speaks directly to sustainability. Might be regenerative ag, such as in soil health or um, transition, you know, to organics, that sort of thing. The product um, on this one is very similar to what the retail one is. It's an input loan. 
that allows specific farmers or growers to use those products, finance that through us, um, as well as give them access to that loan accounting system. The retail product is very similar. However, that would be for more your cooperatives, your everyday grower that's putting out your traditional corn and soybeans. Um, they, would, they would sign up with that product. The software as a system, I'm gonna describe that as our Trojan horse. When we first started standing this product up, we did not anticipate that that would be a product that our partners would be interested in. However, we have learned that was, that was very much an error. There's quite a few partners that have um, products that they sell in the ag space where they, they, they do it as a, they're carrying those balances for the growers. They're not a financial institution. They're not sanctioned, you know, regulated to do so. Um, and a lot of their processes will be on Excel spreadsheets. So they might be very capital rich and not need the funding, but really looking for a system that provides them with a digital experience for the growers all the way from the application through to payment of their particular loan. So that one's, that one's gaining a lot of interest at this point. Next slide, please. All right, we're gonna take a look at, you've heard me mention this digital lending platform, take a little bit into what those components are and kind of give you kind of the breadth of what we've built here. There is a grower application portal. And again, that is digital and you'll get to see a, a view of that. Um, but I just have to share that, what is profoundly different that we've seen from a lot of the partners that we've talked to, they might tell you there's a digital experience and then you find out that it is a fillable PDF as opposed to a fully digital. This is fully digital. For example, when you key on your phone, you key in that data, it goes directly into that loan operating system. There's also a finance manager portal because they are involved in the decision if we move forward with these loans. So this gives them access to a place to see what has been submitted see if they agree with it, um, and then also set some of the rates and terms as they might want those. Because sometimes you'll find that they like the growers to have different rates and terms available to them. There's a grower online account access portal, and then a grower online payment portal. Those are distinctly different, but one of them allows them to see their account. And then of course, the other one is where they actually can go and make payments. And again, these are features that a lot of the partners we're working with at this point do not have, you know, for their growers. Alrighty. I keep trying to hit the forward button <laughs> slide. So this one, um, as you can see, the current standard um, on my left is either something that they're filling out by hand or perhaps that fillable PDF. And then they still need to get that information scanned or transported you know, to where the decisioning is happening. Our particular offering is entirely digitized and you will see that it does include the mobile phone version as well as a URL that can be placed um, you know, on your desktop that someone might use to access. And of course, security is very imp important. So we put that in there. Um, but you also note that the application, it can take, it's virtually instantaneous. But as you heard me mention on the previous slide, the partner that we work with, um, we want their agreement that they want this loan to go through. So while the decision can be that quick, it will be reliant upon that finance manager taking a look at it and saying, yeah, giving it the thumbs up and pushing it on through. At that point, the grower will know that they have been approved and then just wait for the loan documents to come through. All right. This is just a quick visual of what that finance manager processing platform looks like. It's just a screenshot of what we have. But this is where they will either choose the rate. They might, um, you, sometimes you hear about in the input finance space, 0% um, offerings. Obviously, there's a rate that's being paid somewhere, but they can adjust the rate that goes to their customer. If it's a particular customer or a promotion that they have, they can apply that, but maybe not apply that to every one of their growers. So this gives them some flexibility. It also allows them to look at the financials that the grower has supplied. And a lot of um, finance managers are pretty familiar with what their grower's financial position is, but maybe haven't seen these numbers before. Um, and we, we have, it gives us a lot more integrity and confidence in what those decisions are, knowing that we have a finance manager that's taken a look at those numbers. And if they see something that's off, they can call the customer and say, hey, you know, maybe you keyed in an extra zero here or you missed that sort of thing and make sure that when it comes through for that final decisioning that we have good information. 
So this is a step, um, an extra step, if you will, but helps us ensure that data is what we need that to be. All right. So then the loan gets booked, it gets onto um, the core banking system. And this is just an example of what that account portal will look like if you're the grower taking a look at your account and you wanna see, um, you can see what the payments were, but also has any money been um, dispersed on the loan because the loan will be set up. Um, the timing depends sometimes, of course, at the end of the year as they do prepays, but the timing of the disbursement also matters. Their loans can also be divided into multiple tranches, if you will. So if you have an input loan and the partner wants a portion of it to go for seed and another portion of it to go for fertilizer, chemistry or whatnot, they have ability to designate those tranches within the loan requests. So that's just another feature that we found is pretty valuable to them. And then the growers can also see those differences on this type of statement. All right, next slide, please. And then this, whoops, the, the previous one was an example of the, um, oops, okay, you're good. The, there's another slide, it's not in this particular one, it's the one that I'm looking at, which is just where their payment portal is. It's nothing different, so that we, we must have removed that out of there, but it is just a different um, app that the farmer goes into, one to pay and then one that they actually see the account information. So I want to share a little bit with you to understand, um, you know, how do we come up with this scorecard? Um, what is the basis for this? The team is entirely made up of, of lending experiences, all that have um, 15, 20, 25, 30, 40 years of experience. Um, there's a standard ag model that you may be accustomed to, which is in-depth, full analysis for repayment capacity. Um, that is traditionally done if you're looking at a term loan where you purchase a piece of equipment real estate, or looking at an operating loan. The distinction I wanna call out here is sometimes folks will talk about an operating loan versus an input loan. Again, this is an input loan, not a full operating loan. So input is for specifically for those products that they're purchasing through those partners, not let's say I have a tractor that broke down and needs some money to get that repaired, you know, and get it paid for right in the moment. That's not what this loan is for. But that's what the standard operating loan type of analysis goes if you go to a bank or another um, you know, ag finance. Then there's also the credit bureau focused model. That's one that we as consumers often run into when we're looking for credit, but really is looking at that credit bureau um, gets a really quick answer. And if you're a consumer versus an ag partner, you know, that really can give a pretty decent indication of what your risk is. So our scorecard combines both of those. So we take into account what is necessary to look at if it's an agricultural operation, as well as looking for the speed and understanding what can you know, be brought forward if you're looking at a credit bureau. So of course we look at that credit bureau for the rating and repayments of credit. We also focus on what is liquidity. So that's a couple of the key pieces of information that the farmers are required to key into that application um, portal that we, we looked at earlier. Um, the reason we look at that is because this is a short-term loan. It's for inputs only. It's going to be paid back within a year or less. So we're really interested in what is their current liquidity and ability to pay back this loan. Um, we also ask them about what their crop values are because we look at what the relation of amount, what they've asked for compared to what the crop value is. So that's some automatic um, um, analysis that goes on in the scorecard. Also look at the net worth just so we can kind of get a scale of the operation and make sure that the loan amount, again, is relative, makes sense. And then a piece that we put in here that isn't necessarily in a lot of your other scorecards is looking at their crop insurance coverage level. What type of crop insurance do they have? And then depending on the type, what, cover, what level do they have? Keeping in mind that it's a short-term you know, crop loan, obviously crop insurance is very important and that will help mitigate the risk. So those are the key components that we look at to make those credit decisions. All right. So those are the factors that I just talked to through there, just laying those out, the credit report, the crop insurance quality, working capital compared to gross farm income, um, getting at that liquidity, the loan request compared to the gross crop value, and then loan request at net worth just to make sure things are in balance. All right, so this will give you some sense of what are we doing today, you know, in lending um, with Growers Edge and where are we within our pilot projects. 
So again, key point is we are piloting. Um, we're looking at crop year 2021. I always, you'll hear me talk about crop year versus just the fiscal year. Cause I, of course in agriculture, that's really meaningful. But our plan for crop year 2021 is to run a couple of pilots, ensure that uh, most importantly, that our system is connected together the way that we believe it is. Obviously we've tested it, but you wanna make sure all the things really work for external partners. And then those processes are really key. When you think about, especially a SaaS product, you've got to be extremely efficient. You've got to be able to provide the right amount of information and data to the right partners, which are quite varied from the grower, perhaps to an investor, um, to that particular partner. So we're getting all of those things, making sure those are in place. We do have a pilot that is launched in this space. Um, we also are negotiating with a bank for this particular product. Um, most of my career was spent within the foreign credit system, but also um, spent some time within the banking environment. And I was keen to notice that banks do not have efficient, effective systems for decisioning for ag loans in specific. They're really good on your consumer loans, um, but they really do struggle. And you'd be shocked at the things that they do in a very manual process at the bank level. I've talked with a bank that works with, and you'll see that next bullet says roll out with two local independent retailers. The bank that we're talking to in Iowa has a relationship with those independent retailers, and it wants to pilot with us for some mid-season product sales to see how that will work. Obviously, they will be providing the capital. That's why the SaaS product is important to them. They use the same core banking system that we've built this product with. Um, our hopes would be is that we might be able to send them a file and they can upload that automatically into that core banking system, if you will. Today, they key those in manually and they did at the bank that I was before. And these are large regional banks, but they make a loan decision. Ours automatically feeds the data into that core banking system. That's not the experience that they have at banks. So we also are discussing how we might pilot um, future connections within the banking environment and others. Um, for example, the pilot that we have launched is for one specific um, ag product that they sell and currently don't have a good system in place, but they have the capital. From a retail perspective, and when I say retail, I'm talking about your ag partners, those cooperatives, the traditional cooperatives, we're developing pipeline and be ready to scale late summer and fall, looking into crop year 2022 for that specifically. We have launched the sustainability product um, and you'll see over there available funds and dispersed. That's just to give you an idea. We do have a partner that has provided funds for us specifically for the sustainability. So one of the features are is that we're able to track and if you say you wanted to be involved with us, as this particular partner did specifically for sustainability, we're able to ensure that those funds go directly to growers that are in the sustainability space and partner directly. Um, so we're super excited about that has launched and um, we're learning a lot. Um, we are getting a couple of credits that come through, you know, as you raise your eyebrow at, but the system's catching those as we would expect. So, um, we're gonna to continue um, to have more loans come through there and then learn a few more lessons and be ready to go get into the next crop year 2022. All right. So building for the future, where are we today um, and where do we wanna go? We're adding competencies. Um, obviously I talked a bit about the underwriting and of course in lending that's extremely important and that people have confidence and understand um, what the scorecard is based off of obviously building experience. And I don't mean experience with the people here, but more with the system and those processes that I mentioned earlier. And then as well as scorecard development. Um, there are some other products that we would like to look at and some other ways if we can identify where farmers can have a loan decision made, providing you less information, but an equally accurate decision. That's something that we're working on in the background. Um, from my perspective right now, we're adding resources such as team members. Um, I've got a position out there to bring in a sales role to help us get ready to start having those conversations going forward. Relationships, um, that's a simple word, but really big and important to us is we're very actively building relationships in two fronts, both with prospective partners, you know, the ag retailers, um, some of those specific with those that are in the sustainability space as well as with partners on the funding side. So those are two things that are the highest priority that we're working on today. 
um, adding resources you'll see on there. Investors are funding those pilots and then really digging in deep with some interesting um, ag capital providers that are interested in funding, um, perhaps we put on their intermediate, but also perhaps moving into that sourcing of funds for long-term commitments. Um, quite a few folks are saying, hey, we'd like to be a part of this. Um, can we kind of launch an experiment with, you know, and get some throughput and see where this would take us and then perhaps move into having that long-term commitment with us. All right. And it looks like that point was not inserted on the slide that I had sent to you earlier on the one I can't get up there is there, but really backing up and saying, you know, we are here, are, you know, empowering growers to adapt and thrive, differentiating in the market. This is differentiation for regards for the partners that we're working with. This gives them an ability to do that. Um, we, you know, as a company at Growers Edge, leading change with a financial innovation in agriculture, bringing um, a fully digital platform um, to partners that just don't have access to it today. And I will say some of those that do have access to it today don't have all the features or perhaps some of the opportunities that we that we presented to them in our initial conversations. So. I see there's some questions down there. I, I obviously I can't see those, but Tom, I'll hand it back to you um, to open up for any questions. Awesome, thank you, Holly. Um, great, well, we will uh, open it up to Q&A now, and there are a couple of ways we can do this. The um, first option is you can type in a question in the Q&A box on the bottom of your Zoom screen, or you can raise your hand and I can unmute you. and you would raise your hand on the right side of the screen, um, I believe, and um, that will flag both me and Eva and one of us will unmute you. Um, <clears throat> Holly, I suppose, first question I'd have for you is how can this group on the call today and those listening retroactively uh, help you and help grow that? Yeah, I, you know, I thought about that, you know, anticipating that you would ask that question and where I mentioned those relationships um, you know, most of us conduct our businesses or through relationships of people that we know um, or trust us. And I'd say that would be the biggest call out. And I will say specifically um, potential sustainability partners. They're not necessarily as obvious to us as what those those ag retailers are. So if anyone on the call knows folks that may be in the space where, you know, funding for a crop um, would be effective for them. Um, having connections and introductions to them would be really powerful. Great. Just see if there are any other questions coming in here. Holly, how would you describe kind of the next 12 months? What, what sort of milestones are you working towards to continue to develop out the product? Yeah, once we get through the pilot phase, which you understand, you know, what we're proving out in that moving into crop year 2022, we've set what I think is an attainable but aggressive goal, um, looking at both originations as well as really developing what that SaaS product can look like. Um, but I'm, I will I will say that we do not intend. It's a very um, intentional, not wide open. Let's just go out there and put on everything that we can until we have a little bit more depth, you know, and proof to our systems and to our processes. So um, crop year 2022 will be very important to us. We will put on significant growth when we would go like completely live and say, "Yep, you know, the rest of the world out there that's interested in the product would be looking at crop year 2023." Um, so we put together a forecast um, that aligns to that. And the, really the only limiting factor at that point would become um, the throughput um, as far as getting you know, people honestly hired fast enough to manage what we could do. This system is very much geared towards um, efficiency. As you will see, the relationship lies with the partners, not with us. So we're not ever going to attempt to hire a bunch of people and have boots on the ground to maintain and build out those relationships. That's going to lie with our partners. So we feel that we can scale very effectively with what I you know, might describe as really a very small team, which makes it key that those processes, the data system that we have, you know, Growers Edge has a very robust data team, deep understanding in that space, as well as a technology team. And we're, we're very reliant upon them. 
And then as we move into maybe the next year, 20 or really getting innovative of, you know, how might we be able to make the experience better for growers in proving out that there's some other ways these decisions could be made for them, the loan decisions with even less information, but result in the same, um, you know, risk profile, if you will. Great. Thanks for that. Absolutely. Well, it looks like there are no questions. Um, so, uh, Holly, how can these folks get get uh, a hold of you? Do you have an email address that, that uh, people can use? Yeah, absolutely. It's Holly, H-O-L-I-E. Um, I often get that misspelled. So H-O-L-I-E dot bun, B-U-N-N, at growersedge.com. And I'll just call it, yeah, Tom and I are not related, and it's extremely <laughs> rare <laughs> for, us to, for me to be on a call with another bun. So this it's pretty cool but <laughs> to call that out. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much, Holly. Um, and, and for those in attendance, thank you for joining. Um, if you have a question, uh, please feel free to contact us or Holly. Um, and as a reminder, a, a recording will be made available and you'll receive a notification about that. If you know of anybody who might want to listen to this after the fact, please do share that uh, recording with them. They can sign up on agrifoodconversations.com. And uh, we will be joined by VJ Harrell from Trade Lanes, a, a iSelect portfolio company next week. Uh, at 3 p.m. Central. So we hope to see you all, all then. Thank you again and, and hope everyone has a great afternoon.